Okay. Well, thank you so much for the great introduction and uh, giving everybody an insight on all the things I do. So I'm like a nomad, you can say. You know, I keep traveling from here to there, my hands and feet into trying to do uh, various uh, stuff. And I think I'm like a jack of all trades. Um, and uh, I'm happy not mastering anything, but I'm, I'm a decent jack. I'm a more than decent jack in everything. Okay, yes. you're being <laughs> modest here. I'm sure you're being modest, <laughs> right? So it's an absolute pleasure having you. And I think um, people need to hear this. He's also not just that, okay? The list of things that I mentioned, you guys, you need to know this. He has also written, shot, produced a short film, which is like the favorite of all critiques. Um, he's really good at that. He's also... Yes, it's, well. uh, it's, it's a while ago, yes. Yeah. yeah. And also his lockdown studio, the lockdown studio, his YouTube channel has some really creative content. So please yeah, do make sure to check it out. Okay. Um, so please, great. Please do say it again. Please do. <laughs> yeah, because, you know what? Because, because frankly speaking, it's, 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 um, it's the following and uh, the love that actually provides uh, artists more fuel to, I mean, fuel to do more, uh, more work, uh, more creative work. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So great. Uh, you've uh, really positioned your own status quo in the Indian television industry. You've been here for a really long time. Um, having played remarkable characters, you know, from uh, Gautam Virani uh, in a prime time Indian television show like Kyuki Saspi Kabi Bahuti to playing a really, again, an elusive different character of Abhimanyu in uh, Yeha Mahapate, you've played some really amazing uh, juxtaposition of characters. Um, how does it make you feel, you know, in hindsight, when you look back, Sumit, um, what has your acting journey been like? Uh, it's, it's been quite fascinating. Uh, I've been very happy. Hi, Tenzin. There's somebody called Tenzin who's just said hi to me. Oh. Uh, another Tenzin. Yeah. So, and um, Kishle. Hi, Kishle. Uh, so, yeah, it's been, it's, been, uh, it's been very nice. No complaints at all. Um, I've been a little selfish in a way because, uh, I mean, I'd like to thank uh, my audience for all the love and the support that I've received. Um, very important again, the way I just mentioned that uh, you need support. It acts like a fuel for artists. So sure. um, when you get your love and support, when you're acting as well, um, and uh, you know that you're being watched, you know you're not being judged exactly, but uh, stuff is expected out of you. Things are sure. expected out of you. Um, right. It, it could be, uh, you could take it as some pressure. You could, you couldn't. But if you do, it's good because it will take out the best. Uh, it'll, the best in you will come out. But uh, it's been a good journey. It's been a great journey. Um, I haven't done as much as I could have because I'm a little selective. Uh, I did uh, go back into architecture for about four years in the middle. Yes. Um, so there was a break in my career. And uh, I did. I did decide to come back to acting because it's very difficult to do both. I can mm -hmm. either do act or architecture. You know, it's not like it's it's not like uh, uh, playing Scrabble or writing or something that you can do on the side. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, um, because you know, if I if I'm doing something, I would like to do it 100. Right. Um, doing both of them side by side would mean uh, not doing either of them properly. So yes. Um, They've been different kind of roles. They've been different kind of roles. Uh, Gautam Virani was the first role. Abhimanyu was the last. And uh, quite a few in between. I've done a few negative characters as well, which I love doing. Because yeah. you can really kind of, you know, go a little over the top in those. And, uh, but, but yeah, but again, uh, I'd like to repeat myself that I'd like to thank the audience for all the love and support. And it's been great. Yes, I think uh, your characters have uh, a huge, a massive impact on the uh, audiences. They really admire you for these characters, especially uh, Gautam Virani's character and Abhimanyu's character. Um, so having said that, um, now something I'm very inquisitive to know about. Of course, now you've accomplished uh, your um, you know, um, own savoir-faire in acting, own craftsmanship in acting. But uh, growing up as a child, how was young Sumi? Who was young Sumi? Did you always want to pursue acting? Uh, what yeah. gravitated you? And what were the repercussions? Because I know typical, a lot of typical Indian parents are like, no, it's either medical or engineering. So it's like, did you have these <laughs> sudden disastrous options or did you uh, make your own way? No, my, my parents are very easy, number one. Uh, so there was no pressure from the family in any way. Mm -hmm. And in fact, my mother, my mother is also very artistic, actually. 
Uh, she she is a lovely painter, but she never pursued it uh, commercially. Uh, so maybe maybe it's it's from her I get the little artistic streak or the the tendency of being on this side. But uh, I wouldn't say that um, I aspired to be an actor since I was a kid for sure because I was fairly shy. Um, I was, um, but maybe this this is a very funny story actually. Maybe deep down uh, in me, maybe there was this uh, this wish that I I went on stage and acted. I'm talking about theater stage. That's it. I'm not talking about being on screen and jumping from the tenth floor down. No, yeah. uh, that yeah. really yeah yeah no. So because I remember um, then in Delhi in Mandi House, there's this lovely theater called Kamani Auditorium, and uh, my mother and I and I can't remember who else, but my mother was there because I was scolded that day. Uh, okay. So my mother and I were sitting on the balcony, you know, in the balcony, and we were watching a show, and it was an English play, a very simple set. The set was divided into three parts. Um, it was uh, the center was the drawing dining, the left part was the kitchen, the right was the bedroom. So there was this lady. Oh, this is a quite a long story. I don't know how much time we have. I, I'll say it quickly. Is it it's okay? So yeah. there was, <laughs> so there's this lady who's kind of you know cleaning up in uh, doing a little bit of dusting in, mm-hmm. in, the, in the drawing room. And uh, she hears this voice saying, uh, "Miss, let's presume she's Robinson." So, uh, Mrs. Robinson, uh, I have something to tell you. So uh, she goes, "Oh, he's here. I think I should hide in the kitchen." And she goes, you know, a little exaggeratedly, you know, uh, she goes in the kitchen. Uh, this guy again says, "Mrs. Robinson, are you home?" Uh, and he finds the doors open. He comes in. Mrs. Robinson, where are you? I'm sitting on the balcony. I'm eight years old, seven, eight years old. Miss Robinson, where are you? This is very urgent. Where are you? And I get up. I don't even. I don't do the standing. I get up. I said, okay. "She's in the kitchen." Okay. So, <laughs> and believe me, the entire, the entire. There was about six hundred people in the in the auditorium. They all went bonkers. They just kept laughing, clapping. It took about two minutes for all that stuff to die out. And you know what? Whenever you're on stage and you're acting, these goof ups happen. And actors have to actually. Uh, actors have to. They do. They take out some kind of. They, they do manage every time. But this kind of a situation is like really, really, really difficult. So right. the actor obviously was, was frozen when everything died out. Everything died out. The clapping, the laughing. He continued. Uh, Mr. Robbins, uh, where are you? That that way, kind of. So, okay. Okay. So uh, why why did I come to the story? What was the question? I'm so sorry. What was your mother? Childhood, childhood. Yeah. So, your so interest in action. Yeah. So possibly, so it's possibly it's possible that you know um, uh, I've always I've always loved going to theater. Whenever I walk into a uh, theater and I I see I see the set in dim lighting with the music going on, it kind of I react to it. I love it, and. Um, but i was never really uh, i was shy basically i i never really uh, uh, went when ahead did you find your own escape through this uh, modality called acting did you that was that your escape not really no no not really look uh, theater is something that attracted me always and i'll be very frank with you it is musical theater it was musical theater is, that is what attracted me Uh, when I was about fourteen, fifteen years old, I went to. Oh God, this is another long story now. Uh, what time is it? Okay, so when I was about fourteen, fifteen years old, I went to Kamani Auditorium again, and I mm-hmm. watched the show called My Fair Lady, a musical. Okay. Marvelous, marvelous musical, marvelous. And that's when I said I want to be on stage. I really want to be on stage. I want to go and sing. And I went and I. Uh, it was directed by Amir Reza Hossain, and I said, okay, I need to go and work with Amir Reza Hossain if possible. Because I presume that Amir Azhar Sen does only musicals, which is not true. Anyway, that was a musical. So that was the moment when you decided that this is something that I want to do no, for the rest of my life. I, it's something that I didn't decide that I want. It's something where I realized that I'd love to. Okay, there was I a sort of enigma. There was a sort of enigma that the realization moment. Hey, this is what this is something yeah. that I can do that I like doing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Excellent. So, so about then, yeah. No, no. Carry, so about seven, about six, seven years later. uh because of some connections uh, i mean i i went to work with an architect a summer job he sent me to a ladies place to measure a kitchen that lady turned out to be the same lady who was my fair lady in oh, my fair lady that's a kind of and that's how i got in yeah so so it's so that's how i got in touch with uh, amir reza hosain okay. at that time because i was in college i could not uh, pursue theater at that stage because i was in the middle of studying 
Uh, right. But of course, after that, it happened. So with him. Okay. Perfect. And now, after you gained some sort of exhilaration and hold uh, in acting, now over the years, since you've played a different graph of characters, um, what is your favorite character of all, out of all the negative characters? And what is the process of, of you getting into a character? Because I know a lot of artists say this. Uh, some of my theater friends say, you know, Tenzin, when I get into a character, when I go back home, I'm still in that zone. And that kind of disturbs. For example, if you're playing a really um, sort of disastrous, evil, or maybe a sad character, to be, to be uh, for an instance, that, does that impact you deep down? Does that character have any sort of impact in your personal life? As a person, uh, not exactly. I would say I would say in television. Look, when you're doing theater, uh, that time your rehearsal time and your your involvement is is it's different. Uh, mm -hmm. In television, what happens is that the amount of time frame that you have, so so uh, the speed with which we work, um, I guess we are accustomed to switch on and switch off. Frankly, okay. And um, I would say, except the first show that I did, which was Kyuki, where mm -hmm. I actually got over a month. I got over a month to actually know what the, what the character was about and how he should be. And I did a lot of thinking about it. Um, I never used to smoke. So I used to actually uh, smoke one cigarette in the evening. Uh, what, every, every night after dinner, I would smoke one cigarette in the mirror. Okay. Because, you know, I want to smoke in a particular way so that, you know, it, it doesn't look like there's an amateur smoking kind of a thing. And uh, so that's one of the things. And uh, there were a lot of other things because there was a lot of attitude required in him. But otherwise, other than that, I would say in television, whenever you, whenever you start a show, it's only a good time when you start discovering uh, what are things that he or she would do, how they would do, stuff like that. Um, and, um, and with time, because, because you're doing it so often, so it becomes like a regular job, right? Yeah. So... Uh, so when you are there, when you are there on the set, then you, you very easily do slip into those shoes. Yes. Yes, because I've heard a lot of people saying, I think it's a gift that you possess because uh, sometimes people who are mentally really sensitive, see, I'm an HSP, I'm hypersensitive as a person. You tell me something, I start crying. Tears start, start rolling out. I'm always brimming with tears. You tell me something, I'm there. Um, and I'm very weak that way. But I think it's a gift you possess to switch on and off, which is very difficult for a lot of artists. Now, um, this is amazing. Um, this show, the whole objective, as I said, was to inspire people. And you are here with your own story. Um, I want to know a really uh, interesting aspect of your uh, career. Um, for people listening to us right now, listening to you right now, what is your principle of success? Because success can connote different meaning to different people. For somebody, it could be just, you know, having a more happy relationship. For somebody, it's just making more money. Uh, but for you, in your perspective, number one, what is success? And what are the principles of success? How can a person be successful and more happier? Uh, I would, I, uh, one thing I'm very certain about that, uh, one thing that I am very certain is that uh, success cannot be measured by the amount of money you make. Certainly. So sure. if that is your that is your only aim, um, I think then there is something missing. It's not going to work out, right? You're not going to be something. That, you know, there, there should be something more than that for sure. Yeah. It is something that is required for sure, uh, but it is not. Uh, it is not something that you should bank on for happiness or for uh, to feel that you are successful or some stuff like that, right? Right. right. So I'm not really sure if I'm the right person to ask this because. Um, I am a very uh, strict person with myself because whenever I do anything, I have to be, I, I really, really um, grind myself to make sure that it's, it comes out as perfect as possible. So mm -hmm. I, I really put myself through a lot to, for whatever little bit, for whatever I'm doing, when I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on something, I really put, grind myself to be successful at it. So, you know what I mean? So. I uh, so principles of success, I would say, um, is that um, I would say that just just be honest to everyone and to yourself. Be truthful. Uh, don't cheat anybody. Obviously, I mean, if you, if you were to achieve something by cheating anyone, it's worthless. Yeah. And uh, I presume that you know, if you just 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 lead a simple life 
and uh, just focus on what you want. Just just do what makes you happy, irrespective. When you're 60 and you look back, you would feel successful. I know. So as you look back, what you're really trying to say is make sure you think before you do something because that can really impact other people's life because your life is actually associated with other people's life as well because you're a social animal. So whatever you're doing should be able to um, you know, be of service to others, right? Yeah, sure. Yes. So that's amazing. <laughs> Now, why I mentioned that, why I asked you that question is oftentimes what happens is when we have certain road blockers when we have repercussions when we have obstacles uh, we think our dreams were hopeless we 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 think that we are not um too big enough to make a difference we think we're too small of an entity in this world to make a difference we give up so when challenges arrive at our doorstep how can one go about it what do you think do you, do you follow the same principle as just what you said be honest with yourself and do you do, do your 100% I didn't catch a question properly. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. So, um, as you mentioned, you have to be really honest with yourself yeah, and yeah, other yeah. your people. Whatever you do, make sure it doesn't harm other people. At least doesn't hurt other people. If you can be of service to others, right? So, uh, what do you do when challenges arrive at your doorstep? How do you manage challenges and adversities? Well. Uh, <laughs> you know i i for myself i actually create my own challenges and okay. um you know but uh, frankly speaking um, every challenge is different in nature and um you just have to be strong i mean all, all i can say is i can just say simple words that will sound very good but uh, in in a situation like this uh, i look right now i'm sitting at home comfortably uh, there are people out there with all that is going on they are facing so many challenges i am in no position to say anything to them and i have no idea how i mean i can very easily say something that will probably be inspirational to sound it'll, it'll sound inspirational sure. but uh, it's it's a difficult question for me to answer but every challenge is different in itself understand the challenge and uh, try and be strong and face it and that's about absolutely. it i guess absolutely <laughs> because i think as you mentioned true um everybody has a different degree of adversity different degree of challenge yes. For if yes, i think yes. my challenge is too big it may not be big as compared to somebody else's challenge so that's yes. quite interesting now um my dear audience is and the fans of sumit of course uh you know that sumit is a wonderful singer so i think we really like to hear a few lines from you um we can't wait to hear from you just a few lines for us please. is is my uh, is my sister here i can sonia actually... sonia okay. are you here just say hi because if my if my niece is here then i'll sing the song that we sung together okay perfect is she there i'm so sorry i'm not really focusing on uh... okay there is a friend of mine okay yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> okay there she is okay so we we can do momo ke dhage do you know the song you also sing i've seen your videos okay yes but of course not as melodious as you are but i i we can try we can try okay so we can try uh what time is it i'm sorry uh it is it's i think it's only been 27 minutes right now so you can oh, take okay. there's still time take it easy it's okay don't worry no, and in this no, case worst case if it gets cut then we can do one more or another no, what's so <clears throat> so um we will do alternate lines okay so i'll, I'll um let let's sing the paragraph sure. okay yeah of momo ke dhage okay. i'll try it guys just 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 live with bear with us tu hoga zara pagal tune mujhko hai chuna tu hoga zara pagal tune mujhko hai chuna कैसे तूने अन कहा तूने अन कहा सब सुना सरा पागल तूने मुझको है चुना तू दिन सा है मैं रात आ दोनों मिल जाए शामों की तरह ये मोह ke dhage la ra 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 
Thank you so much, Sumi. That was amazing. <laughs> I Big know it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it was. Amazing. Okay. So, uh, after that melodious uh, song from you, I think we're going to have a good night's sleep after listening to that. But uh, apart uh, from apart from joke aside, um, we really want to know more about your lockdown studio, number one. And we also would like to know more about the short film. Uh, the short film I made a very long time ago. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a film called Rehman Sahib Ko Phone Karna Hai. And basically what, what happened was that I, 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 said, I wrote a film for the first time. Uh, and I said to myself that, uh, okay, I've written a film and I needed a producer. So I said that uh, if I go to a producer and I narrate the entire film, what is, uh, and I wanted to direct it as well. So what is the reason? Why will he say, okay, fine, I like, you've written this, but why should I give it to you to direct? Mm -hmm. so, so again, as I told you that if I'm doing something, I want to be, uh, I make my own life complicated. So I said, okay, let me pick up a camera and let me do a mock shoot and let me, let me prove to myself if I can direct at all. So what I did was that I, I picked up a camera without any lighting, without any sound. I just kind of did a mock shoot with mock uh, the casting was also kind of mock for sure. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I just fell in love with the entire, with that entire raw shoot because, you know, the rawness of a first time filmmaker came across. So I did have to spend a little bit of uh, a lot of time and a bit of money in kind of upgrading the, the, the sound, the picture, stuff like that slightly, not, not, not too much. Right. And uh, well, it did quite well. It went, uh, it went to about nine film festivals. What was good was that there were a lot of film festivals where my film did not qualify because of the time. Oh. Because, you know, there are cutoffs. You know, my, my movie was a 45-minute film, 44-minute long film. And uh, your short films cut off at 20, 25, and your feature started at 60. So it was an uh, in-between. But still, I was happy that uh, it was selected. In, I, I did send them. They, they, they had a clause that said that even if it doesn't qualify, if we like the film, we'll screen it. It will not be uh, in the category for any award. So it got selected in a couple of festivals where it did not qualify as such, but it, there was, it was still screened, so it felt good. Okay. And is this and, uh, yeah. YouTube right now, or do no, they have no, no. particularly... <coughs> how did it's they, not available anymore. How did because they... Because I, I... No, because I've, uh, I've actually... I've actually written a feature version of the same. That's why I haven't put it out. I haven't, uh, I haven't kind of made the shorter version accessible. Okay. So um, that's about it. Okay. And um, Lockdown Studio is, uh, guys, Lockdown Studio, listen to this, listen to this, Lockdown Studio. So Lockdown Studio is, uh, is a new channel that I started about two months ago. And um, I love to sing. Uh, I just thought that I'll, I'll utilize this time that I have at hand. And um, just kind of come up with a few covers. In a way, you can call them covers because they're not exactly covers. They're kind of, uh, the songs are... The first song was We Are The World, which was sung exactly the way it is. I did remold a few lyrics uh, for the coronavirus uh, unfortunate uh, scenario that's going on. Uh, second, yeah, YouTube, Anjolika, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. You check my post, you'll know, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get the links over there. Um, so um, the second was like a prayer. It was uh, Ikonkar. Yes. The, the third song I had made, I made just purely for entertainment. It actually is very entertaining and it is a little mm -hmm. funny as well. It's mm -hmm. Pyara Mekis Mor Te Le Aya. Uh, the fourth song is, um, it's an original. It's called Jite Hum. It's an original. It's, it's, a, it's a dedication, a tribute to all the, uh, the Corona warriors, the frontline warriors, the policemen, the doctors, medical uh, staff, everyone. Uh, I'm working on the fifth, which will hopefully be a genuine cover where uh, it'll be where I'm changing the scale, I'm changing the tempo, very unplugged. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm giving, uh, I'm giving uh, perfect a shot at, at Shirin's perfect. Uh, so let's see how it, how it, and so I think, how it shapes out. Yes, and I think I did see your, uh, the version of Sate Pe Sata that you've done, seven different yeah. characters by one person. Seven different characters. How did you manage to It was to shot right here. Sorry? How did you manage to play seven characters one time? No, because courtesy of the lockdown, every 10 days you get a beard, right? So I let the beard grow for another another 10 days. So 20 days I had. So I had one character. Then then I had the second character with just this much. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, the side locks. The third one had kind of a jazzy, jazzy mustache, whatever, a half goatee. So that, that way, kind of. 
So from from the beard to clean shaven and everything in between. So it wasn't very difficult. <laughs> it was very difficult to come into those characters but it was a little complicated to kind of uh, accommodate all those characters within the same space so the editing was a little complicated but i think it came out very well yes so yeah the so lockdown studio is is here to entertain you people through singing uh, i i i utilize different uh, stuff at home uh, different things at home where like right now this bottle could be my mic yeah so there are different things that are my mics and um, yeah so just just uh, visit subscribe and give me the fuel obviously yes, please please everybody here watching right now spread the word if you already know about it watch his video okay lock the lockdown studio videos plural <laughs> yes, videos an array of videos okay yeah. and especially my personal favorite is the one that you where you're playing the role characters the different characters of satya pe satya because it's i think yeah. it's really difficult to do it yes um Okay so I think uh, that was about most of the questions but before leaving uh, this interview I think I something I really want to ask is um how has your life changed post the outbreak of coronavirus how has it affected you um I don't think it's really changed very much it has changed for sure changed to the extent that we're just stuck at home and we don't get out um look I'm an actor and actors lives we 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 are professionally one does go through every actor has gone through phases lockdown phases professionally you know what i mean right and uh, so so it's not it's it's not something that you know you're missing that you know you're, you're very busy working so you go through busy phases but you know a life of, of an actor is very erratic our schedules are very erratic so uh, even even while you're working even while you're doing a show you may go through uh, 10 days of rigorous shooting after which you may just not shoot for 5 days at a stretch sure right Every, every day in itself is also very erratic in terms of you don't have a fixed time to go you don't have a fixed time to come back you you may shoot for about 4 hours 4 to 6 hours one day you may shoot uh, 12 to 14 hours another day right and yeah. i'm very happy with that uh, with that erraticism i have kind of uh, gelled very well with it i have no problem it's just that when i have my scrabble tournaments is when i require an adjustment when i travel for scrabble um and uh, so i think uh, i think somebody who had a who has a regular job who has a monday to friday 9 to 5 job every alternate saturday sundays are holidays for somebody like them i would presume this kind of this lockdown and staying at home kind of thing would have affected uh, much more this is when i'm comparing myself just to people who are working and living comfortably uh, right. obviously it has affected a lot of yeah. people in, in yes in, in definitely terrible, terrible case my heart goes out to them and i, I wish uh, everything sorts out very soon we're all hoping for the best sumit thank yes. you so yes. much it was an absolute pleasure delight having you on my show um and i'm and i'm sure that you're going to be lucky for me uh as my first guest um thank you uh, so much convey my regards to amrita I, i did see her right now uh, so hello amrita a big hello good. to you a big hello to oh, everyone oh yeah she's keep up fine and okay. and thank you to your niece as you know, well yes 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 i'm sure she's there very well yeah. But thank you, thank you. It was it's been a pleasure, and I wish you all the very best, Tenzin, with all your show, with all your shows ahead, your talks ahead. Okay, see you guys. Bye. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, take care. Stay safe. Bye.